real cases before a real judge. Plaintiff Anita Amelie was married and a goody two-shoes with three children. But after her divorce, she lost 130 pounds, got breast implants, and started working at a bikini bar. And that's when she started dating the defendant. However, their relationship didn't work out, and she's suing her ex for a car, car repairs, and emotional distress. Defendant Thomas Cooper says he and Anita were in an open relationship, and they frequented the strip clubs. Thomas says Anita got too close to him and got his name tattooed on her neck, but they ended the relationship because she couldn't deal with his other women. Thomas denies owing Anita for anything. Start with you. Well, Your Honor, when I met this man, I had been actually a goody two-shoes. I was married, I had three children. Um, I was in school for the ministry to become an evangelist. Um, things didn't go right with my marriage, and after that, I started um, working at a uh, bikini bar. I had lost 130 pounds and had breast implants put in. And what was your objective? <laughs> Actually, I just I wanted a change of life. I did everything right, and it just wasn't working for me. So I said, well, I'm ready to try something new. This is a big change. No, that's just it not was a change. A large change. That's a revolutionary change. It was. <laughs> You're going to be an evangelist. <laughs> then just suddenly one day, you decide you want to work at a bikini bar. Yes, All right. sir. And what did that have to do with anything? I was just trying to get the connection. I had just actually got lost myself, I think. And at that point... From what? From your divorce or something? Yes, from my divorce. All right. A lot of things. And um, at that time... And I, you didn't believe that the God you wanted to evangelize about could help you? I mean, you, evangelism that, is going out telling people, come to God, he exactly. will help you. And exactly. And the very person who's about to do that, time you get a problem... You don't believe it. You're not one of those. I'm glad you didn't. You might have been one of those evangelists <laughs> to go around here talking and collecting people's money. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then when they have a problem, they forget about God. They say, oh, I forgot. That's the one I've been preaching about. Instead, they turn to drugs and alcohol. All right, turn to God next time if that's the way you've been taught. I no? have. The I've, bikini I've bar, they don't bet. have what you need. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Is that where you met him? Yes, sir. Well, I guess they did have what you needed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn to God next time if that's the way you've been taught. I no? have. The I've, bikini I've bar, they don't back. have what you need. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Is that where you met him? Yes, sir. Well, I guess they did have what you needed. <laughs> <laughs> Plaintiff Anita Amelie is suing her ex-boyfriend, who says despite the fact that he and Anita were in an open relationship, they broke up because Anita couldn't deal with his other women. All right, so you met him while you were working there? Yes. Tell me about that. At that time, I used to work for Fortune 500 companies prior to that, and um, part of the change, as I stated, I wanted to pursue new things. Um, I was there for training for um, bartending, mm -hmm. and he was a regular customer there. And at that time, um, we developed, you know, a, a casual relationship through work, and then after that, um, one day he asked my boss, he said, you know, what time is she getting off work? And he invited me to go to a strip bar. And I had never been to one. Mm -hmm. So we went, we had a great time. And then after that, things progressed from there. And then we had started hanging out more often. And that was his lifestyle though. He's single and no children. So I followed in that path with him. Okay, um, why'd then, you all break up? We didn't actually have a, a committed relationship. Oh, okay. It was pretty open. It was, yeah, it was pretty open. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just pick you up from the bar and take you home? No, oh well, no. Let me Judge, hear from you. Okay, we, we did meet in the bar. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. We hung out a lot. Mm -hmm. We went to strip bars quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we got real close, and then actually she started, I think, liking me a lot. Mm -hmm. So she ended up getting my name tattooed on the back of her neck. And you know, I used to I used to call her my little Kim Kardashian. Used to call me her little Ray J or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if y'all have a freak video like they take, <laughs> I think I'll pass. <laughs> Go ahead. No videos. But you know, things went well with us. I mean, but after so long, and I guess you know, having an open relationship, me dealing with other women, she couldn't take it. 
So we decided just to, you know, be friends and just okay. chill on the uh, How sexual How do we get activity. to the car you're suing him about? Um, like I said, we remained friends. Um, he was there for me through a, a lot of losses. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, had the death of my father. And in November, I was in an automobile accident and broke my spine. Mm -hmm. And I had no vehicle at the time. So I asked him at that time if he was interested in selling his second car that he had. And he drives a Mercedes, and this was just a Taurus. And it was just something to get me by. Okay, so what happened? Um, I made the offer, and he accepted. How much? Uh, $1,200. Mm -hmm. He called me uh, the day before I was due to pick it up, and he said somebody, I think a female, slashed all four tires of mm -hmm. the vehicle. So I said, okay, well, I, my original job was in the junkyard. I said, I can I can probably get a good price on some tires. So Okay, did you? Yes. When you got tires put on it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to what occurred. Okay, got the vehicle, got the tires. That was $100 afterwards. Um, then also uh, the vehicle was giving me some problems getting started, and also the tow truck driver couldn't get it started from the battery this being is bad. the day you bought it? Yes. He hadn't been driving it for a while. He was driving the Mercedes. So it had been sitting, and the battery wore down. Okay, and so that's all you thought was wrong was the exactly. battery? Exactly. So right. I replaced the battery, and then I started having problems with the um, starting of the car. All right, and you called him? Yes. What did he say? He said at that time he said that he had his um, mechanic that worked on it previously, mm -hmm. and he would either take a look at it, if I wasn't happy with the car, that he would fully refund me mm -hmm. the car, drive it for a little while. And so what happened? I took it to him. Mm -hmm. He did some work on it. The fuel pump had went out totally, so he replaced the fuel pump, and at that time I asked him, about having a diagnostics done because uh -huh. the engine light mm -hmm. was on. We did that, and when we did that, we found out that the pistons and the O-rings were gone on the car. Okay, and what did he say when you discovered that? At that time, he said, look, he said, I'm not, I'm not getting involved in all that. I told you I'd get it repaired for you. Um, all right, let's go to you, sir. What happened? Well, the agreement was when she first bought the mm -hmm. car, I told her within that week, if anything goes wrong with the car, I'll refund you your money. Mm -hmm. So when it did, Something went wrong. I asked her, I said, well, you want your money back. I guess it, us being friends, she said. Did he ask you that? It, well, he didn't put a time frame. He's putting a time frame now. He just said, drive the car for a while uh -huh. and, see, <laughs> and see how it goes. If, if you have any problems. Did he ever say, I'll give you your money yes, back? Yes, he did. So why didn't you take your money back? Because at the time, I, due to my back, I had so many doctor's appointments. Gotcha. His grandmother passed. He told him to come drop it off, ma'am. A man offered you 100% of your money back. You should have taken that 100% of your money back. But go ahead. You offered her that, and she turned it down. Right, and I guess as Bill's being friends, she, she, once, she t once she turned it down, I told her, well, I don't know what else to tell you. Call her my little Kim Kardashian. You should call me her little Ray J or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> um, <so laughs> if y'all have a freak video like they take, <laughs> I think I'll pass. <laughs> Plaintiff Anita Amelie is suing her ex-boyfriend, who says despite the fact that he and Anita were in an open relationship, they broke up because Anita couldn't deal with his other women. What was the most recent communication regarding the car? That he um, was going to assist me in paying for the fuel pump or whatnot. And Are you pointing at him? Be this happens to be my mechanic. I, well, oh, okay. Mechanic. Yes, my he, was going, mechanic. He, he told the last. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever. Uh, the last discussion you all had was that he would pay the mechanic for the fuel pump. Yes. That would take care of everything. Well, he said he would take care of the repair costs of whatever it needed to be. Beyond done. the fuel pump or yes. just the fuel pump? No. He would have the car fixed to where it was in running condition. Finally. Okay. And you don't know what that required? I did not know at the time. Okay. Was that the last discussion? I didn't agree to pay all the repairs. I, I agreed for the fuel pump. That's what you it, agreed to pay once for. Once it got repaired. All right, and that's it? That was the final discussion regarding this car? Right. Did see. you pay for the fuel pump? I gave her $200 for it. All right, and was that enough for the fuel pump? I'm not for sure what she did. I put gave her the money in her hand. I don't know if she... All right. Ma'am, he gave you $200? He did give me $200, and I have text messages that are here where we're discussing it. Let's see it. You got a low energy today. You get enough sleep? You he didn't have you out last night, did he? 
I know that happens a lot in these cases that I have. Exes, they come to Chicago to sue each other, and then the next day when they're in the court, uh, they say, we were together last night, Judge. <laughs> and they come in all low energy and all, I don't know, I ask him. Da, 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 da. We all together last night? No. Couldn't find a strip bar. <laughs> Couldn't find a strip club, otherwise it would have. All right, I'm looking at this. July 11, 2012, from the defendant. I'm going to give you $200 for the car to be repaired. That's it. Then, your response? Not sure if you were busy yesterday. Are you able to drop off the $200 today? Then, thanks for dropping off the money. <laughs> I'm just so sad that your heart seems so hard and I feel like you think I'm trying to get over on you. We thought that that was all that was wrong with the vehicle. But once he had inspected it and put the fuel pump in, we found out later at that point. Show me that after July 16th, where you were satisfied with the $200. Show me something after July 16th, where you spoke to him and said, there's some other things wrong, so I need more money. It's actually up there within those texts. Where you, read it to me, because I didn't see that. Okay. Where you tell him there's some other things wrong, and he tells you, sure, I'll pay for it. He didn't ask. I know he didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Your claim is dismissed, ma'am. You all had an agreement that he would give you $200 more. He gave you those $200 more. You accepted the $200, so you all settled your claim. She still has the car, I assume, right? Yes, sir. Have a good day.